Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. The King has returned. So let's catch you all up on one of Destiny's greatest raids of all time, King's Fall. A few notes before we start, this is a reprised raid so there is no new lore, it's all old lore, this is supposed to be a moment that's set in time. But looking back in the archives, I actually found out that I never actually did a lore video that was specifically on King's Fall back in the day. Shameful, I know. So we'll work on this throughout the rest of the season and break down all the lore of the raid in multiple other videos just like we did for Vow of the Disciple because you know what? It's an awesome raid and more people need to play it and it's also one of the most important lore moments in the entire story. Today though, we're going to be giving you all the basic overview, what you need to know before you jump in and where we are in this moment in Destiny's story. But first, a word from our sponsors, Outplayed. What is Outplayed? It's Pretty simple actually, it's software by Overwolf that runs in the background and specifically looks for your best gameplay moments to capture them. It automatically records key plays from kills to headshots to clutch moments in the Crucible and then lets you easily share them online. You can quickly share them to Discord, YouTube or anywhere else with the touch of a button. You can also really quickly use Outplayed to edit down your clips so you can cut out any of the filler and just show off the good stuff. Overwolf supports well over 300 games, including Destiny 2, so whether you're playing Apex Legends, Valorant, anything else, you can use it anywhere almost to show off your best moments no matter where they are. Download Outplayed from the link down below in the description and show off just how much more cracked at Destiny 2 you are than the lore guy who is here sitting in the corner reading books. Thanks to Outplayed for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So, King's Fall is the crowning, final moment to the story of the Taken King expansion. That story is one that really starts a long way back in the Books of Sorrows. Seeing as we're not trying to tell the whole of Dynasty again, I'll skip those details for now. By the way, if you've not seen my full retelling of the story of the Hive, the Taken King, Savathun, and everything else related to very much this, go and watch Dynasty. It'll be linked at the end of the video. I spent a lot of time on that, and this is very much relevant now. It's mostly there, with the exception of the fact that we didn't know any details about Rolk and the Witness at the time being, but aside from that, it is all very much up to date. For our short recap, we should really start with the note that we avenged Eris Morn and killed Crota, the son of Oryx, on the moon. Oryx was not so pleased with this, given that, well, it's his son, but also because this was a direct attack on his own power. You see, Crota would still have tithed power up to Oryx, and Crota's death would have been a serious blow to Oryx's own personal power, power that he gains from all of his underlings as much as himself. An answer needed to be given to this. So, Oryx arrived in Sol a few months later with his armada in tow. At the head of the armada was his Dreadnought, a massive vessel that was also a paradox of a thing containing his throne world in our physical world. Confused by that? Yeah, another reason to watch Dynasty. It, it's a whole thing. The Dreadnought is basically his massive floating fortress in the sky, and this is the site of the King's Fall raid, so prepare to get very familiar with the bowels of a deep hive ship. When Oryx arrived, he wreaked havoc across the system. He destroyed the Awoken fleet at the Battle of Saturn, killed Marasov, temporarily as she planned, and unleashed the Taken across the entirety of the system. They were his to command, as is demonstrated by his title of Taken King, even if they were originally those of the command under the witness and if they were kind of loaned to him, shall we say. In response to his arrival, we investigated the disturbances left in his wake and worked with Cade Six and Eris Morn to board the Dreadnought, discover the means to pursue Oryx, and ultimately faced off against him at the altar of Oryx.
We defeated him here, but Oryx was not truly dead. He is a hive god, and for him to truly die, he needed to be killed in his throne world. This meant we needed to weaken his remaining ties of tribute so that we could weaken him further, and then by doing so, we would be able to travel deeper into the heart of the Dreadnought in order to kill him for good. This requirement initiated what would be known as the Taken War, where we hunted down the Shades of Oryx across Earth, Venus, and Mars, disrupting Taken forces in the process. We banished and defeated his potential successor, Alakul the Darkblade. We swept through the Dreadnought and broke Oryx's hive forces within, and we challenged Oryx's greatest warriors in the Court of Oryx, the entrance to the heart of his throne world, and the place where his greatest ascendants vied for favor. It's also known as the High War, and its formation was one that took place billions of years ago. Want to learn more about it? Yep, you guessed it. Watch Dynasty. I promise that's the last time I plug it this video. Once all of this was done, Eris Morn instructed us to access the Court of Oryx and to enter the true heart of the Dreadnought to pursue the Taken King for good. This is where King's Fall took place. All of this, however, was not something that Oryx resisted in the way one might expect. The Taken King knew that this was a contest of the sword logic, and that in order to prove his worth, he would need to be mightier than us guardians. So the depths of his throne world were paved with challenges to test our mettle so that we might prove our might and show that we were worthy of making our final greatest argument to the Taken King himself, thus showing that we were worthy of existing and that he was not. Thus, as we entered the depths of the Dreadnought, we would face the greatest that the Hive had mustered, their true paragons of darkness. The War Priest, Golgoroth, the Daughters of Oryx, and the Taken King himself. The War Priest was the first that we would face. With an oversoul similar to that of Crota, the War Priest was a replacement for Oryx on the battlefield, and in many respects was nothing more than a grand preacher of the way of the sword logic. But also, he was very specifically a tool of tithing for Oryx. He weighed the enemies of the Hive against the axioms of their beliefs, and as they attained victory, tithed all of that destruction upwards to Oryx, so that Oryx might be free of his worm's need to devour him. He was a faithful servant that enabled Oryx to explore the nature of the final shape, which, according to the Hive, is that of victory. He said, challenge me by the law of my ascendance, match me in bloodshed, or in blood be drowned. Defeating him would involve first proving our worth to him, and then would involve defeating him in battle as he grew in ferocity and power. Then we would enter the king's cellar and faced Golgoroth, a true monstrosity of an ogre. There is scant little that we know about Golgoroth, save for the fact that he was made at the decree of the Worm Gods. He is some kind of new flesh, as they put it, which had been made to grow. He is strengthened at his heart with burrowing things that created his new growth implying that he is some kind of experimental ogre monstrosity, the next generation of them. Maybe there's something involving the flesh of the worm gods themselves within Golgoroth, considering the wording of the grimoire card containing Golgoroth's lore. This new flesh of Golgoroth that grew was as decreed by Aya, and was tied to a tablet of ruin, which Golgoroth guards at the heart of the king's cellar. Then there were the twin daughters of Oryx, Urhalak the Unraveler and Uranuk the Weaver, these twin daughters used their power and the Death Song to unravel reality and then weave it back together in a fashion that would be more fitting to the sword logic. To be unraveled by Ur Halak, or weaved into a new shape by Ur Anuk, is to die. Oryx tried to kill their larvae at their birth, but they were so mighty that one larvae split into two, and thus the twins were born. They are the final guardians before the Taken King himself standing at the apex of his dreadnought. Lastly, when all of his supporters and means of tithing were banished or destroyed, we would face Oryx himself. Here at last, the Taken King would face the Guardians of the Light. Defeating such a powerful foe would be the greatest victory in the Guardian's history. The events of King's Fall would shape the future of the system for years to come, Echoes of that battle and the King's arrival in the system can still be felt within Destiny today. 
He is the reason for Mara Solve's first death, and therefore the fall of the Dreaming City. He is the reason for the corruption of Riven, and by the chain of causality, Aldrin Solve's corruption as well. Or, at very least, the opening of the way to his corruption by Savathun. Speaking of the Witch Queen, his death gave Savathun control of the Taken, and proved to her that the light might be a power greater than the darkness, leading to the events of Witch Queen in a long chain of causality. They also enforced her actions across Destiny 2's vanilla release, Shadowkeep, and the seasons of Opulence, Arrivals, The Hunt, The Chosen, The Splicer, and The Lost. The death of Oryx truly reinforced the moniker of Godslayers that we Guardians had attained from the defeat of his son Crota, and enforced in us a new doctrine that made us think of ourselves as invincible. The death of Oryx was the stopping of an overlord that had existed for thousands of years. It was a death knell for the hive of the Sol system, and weakened them intrinsically for years to come. Whilst we have seen many important moments in Destiny's history, this is perhaps the most important of all. If not, then at least it ranks within the pantheon of the greatest moments upon which history in Sol has turned, such as the Great Disaster, the Battle of the Twilight Gap, the Great Hunt, the defeat of Rolk, the first disciple of the Witness, and the first use of the darkness by the Guardians of the Light. King's Fall is in many ways the greatest defining victory of our Guardian's tale. It was the first moment where we were ushered into an age of triumph and hope, before that came crashing down in an age of change brought on by Dominus Gaul and the death of Cade VI. It is truly one of the most special moments in all of Destiny, and I can't wait to talk about it more with you all. Let me know what you want to know about the lore of King's Fall going forward, and I'll be sure to make it fit into the schedule. But that's all from me for now. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the video and want more King's Fall raid lore, go ahead and leave a like. And of course, also remember to hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.